Well, something that we're all very grateful for is those people who have served our country. We are forever in debt to you. And it just so happens to be Military Appreciation Month. So today we're gonna to hear a few stories from our local vets and one being our very own Russell Selman from the Coastal Living Team. Let's learn about their stories. Hi, I'm Russell Selman. I'm with the Coastal Living Team. I'm also a veteran. I was in the Navy for seven years as a corpsman and I was mostly stationed with the Marine Corps. Hi, I'm Jason Casera. Uh, I was in the Army for 20 years, from 96 to 2016. I'm a local guy, graduated from Callan High School in 96 and took off with the Army, and um, we moved back in 2016 and been here since. Hi, my name is Christopher Haig. I was in the Navy, uh, medically retired at 12 years. I'm currently here in Corpus as a business owner for Phoenix Technology Consulting. Dad was in the military, my grandpa was in the military, they all went to war, so it was just kind of a, a feeling of, you know, even though my dad passed away at the age of like five, I still had that want mm -hmm. or desire to, to follow in the footsteps of the other men. Both my parents were Air Force, all four of my grandparents were Army and Army Air Corps. Um, my, my grandfather on my dad's side was at the beach in Normandy. I mean, we have very, you know, long-standing military, you know, history with our family. I was afraid of being stuck on submarines, but later on in life you learned you actually have to earn that right to be stuck in a submarine. So that's kind of why I went Army, was just, uh, yeah, avoiding um, ships. I remember my cousin telling me a story during Desert Storm, how he broke his leg, and it was like the coolest freaking thing ever. Like, you know, it was him saving a guy, you know, I forget exactly what he was doing, but I was like after I'm 12, and I was like, wow, that is so cool. I have three sons, and um, I just, I don't really want them to serve right now. Um, when we went to Iraq in 2003, um, there was like a big eye opener and I think for a lot of guys, I mean I have veteran buddies who look back at 03, 04 time frame and they're like, why? And so I think that, um, I think you'd have to have a really good reason these days to send young men and women to war. I don't want my, and I don't want my sons to have to deal with that. I want them to go to college first at a minimum and maybe at least then they could be commissioned and go in as officers. Honestly, the military is a good avenue for folks who don't have any other out, you know, or, or options, you know, and that was the same for me. I didn't know what I wanted yet because you live this one lifestyle for so long, right? That it's mm -hmm. this is all you really know, especially for us who just right out of high school, you know, and now here you are, you know, in your 20s and 30s, you know, as being this is all I know, you know, what do you, what do you do next? Because we didn't live the regular lifestyle like everybody else. Because when you get out, it's the real world. Like, there's no, yes, you can mess up in the military, but it's a slap on the wrist. You get out in the real world, it's totally different. You get fired, you lose your job, it's not a secure thing to find another one. Same thing with school. If you don't make it through school, then what do you do? You know, so does the security of the military play with how you feel when you get out? And then also you're trying to mesh at the same time with a variety of personalities that are nothing like yours. Uh, I mean, let's face it, you know, like you spend a few years in the military and your personality starts to change a little bit because you're just around like-minded individuals all the time. Thank you for watching part one of our Veterans Roundtable. Please stay tuned for part two.